performers, I'd like a volunteer from the audience, someone from the first row who would be willing to come up on stage for 30 seconds and give me two pieces of information. Your phone number and the phone number of anyone in your phone book whose name will pop up if they call you. Is someone willing to do that? I, I, I swear I'll make no money off of this. You, sir. Thank you. Pardon? You do, right here. Well, that should be stuff right there. Okay, so you're going to give me two pieces of information. First of all, I hope your mic works. Uh, your phone number, which is... I'm going to give it to you or am I giving it to the room? Give it to me. Why don't you type it? Okay, now the phone number, just, just name the person that you're going to give me the number next. Is it, is it, you have your phone, your smartphone, do you? Yes, I do. Okay, well, yes, okay. Sorry. And it's sorry. Turned, is it turned on? It is. Indeed. Now someone whose name will pop up if they were to call you. Okay, you want, you want the name? No, well, yeah, you give them the name, give them, give me the number. Give them the name. Katie Williams. Katie Williams. And why don't you type in Katie's number right there? I'm going to mentally make Katie call you right now. And then see if I see if I am actually correct. Are you getting a call? I'm not. You will. I was working on it. Pardon? I'm looking forward to that. Hey, my phone's ringing. What? It's Katie. Let me really take this. You can, sure. Hello? Do I sound like Katie? Sweetheart, what happened? Okay, now ver verify to this audience that in fact it was Katie who called you. That's what it says on the, on the screen here. Okay. But it wasn't her voice. Well, you know what? You know, she had a cold. Point sorry. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, now I'd like to do a more important demonstration, but before I do that, I'd like to explain something. What I just did, any 12-year-old child can do. We live in an environment where our mobile phones have become our most important instruments of communication, storing information. It facilitates our businesses, our private lives, wakes us up in the morning, anything that we like. It has also become the greatest spy on the planet. Now, what we just did was a, a very simple test called spooking, where I can, I can make anybody call anybody, apparently, at least, by having their number show up on your screen when I call you. There are a lot of reasons I may want to do this. If I wanted to hack into Sony Corporation, for example, I would call the general manager from the CEO's office and say, hello, uh, my name is Zaypod Beeblebrox with the FBI. We are locking down the company because there's been a security breach. To verify your identity, please give me your password. They will do this. People actually do things just ridiculous. What I, I'd like to do now, I have my assistant over here, Andrew, who I don't pay anything, by the way, or very little. And I'm going to do the same thing with Andrew, only we're going to do something totally different. I'm going to call him from a number 666-666-6666. I can do that too. And what is your phone number, sir? Pardon? Three, three, four. Now all the girls here will be calling you numbers, right? Five, two, four. Seven, zero, four, three. Now, what Andrew has done is downloaded a flashlight application that I created myself. Now, I do not put this up on Google Play so people can download it and, and, and have me play. But you know, this is a private app that, that only a few people are allowed to get access to. It does nothing but turn on the flashlight. In other words, it turns the flash on your camera on constantly until you turn it off. A nice app. There are many of these out there. All of them do the same thing that I'm about to do. Does the camera get okay? So what I've done is I am dialing Andrew's number, which he just gave me, from 666-666-6666. I'm going to call. Now Andrew's phone is going to ring, and when it rings, I'm taking a picture of him. 
When you answer, just put thumbs up, man. just sent me an email. I'm going to uh, get the email right now. Whoops. Let's get into my email. And we hopefully have a photograph of Andrew. Now, it's that simple. Everybody who has a flashlight app, I don't care which flashlight app you're using, you have given it permission to do what I just did. Called him and took a picture. Thank you, sir. I don't even have to call him. I can create an app, put it on Google Play, you will download it. And if I, if you acquiesce to submitting to my requirements, which are, I want access to your camera, your microphone, your SMS messages, your emails, your contacts, sounds pretty horrible, doesn't it? Yet every single app does this. Then you have given it permission to do what I just did. Only I don't have to call. It can do it anytime it wants. These apps that we download from God knows where are not all developed by IBM or Xerox or Lockheed or corporations that have internal audits. No, most of them are developed by one or two people, sometimes hackers in Amsterdam or Korea or somewhere in South America. We know nothing about these people. And these applications all require permissions they do not need. Even things like Bible reading apps. These are the applications where it's late at night, you're tired, you don't want to read the Bible yourself, so you want the, the, your phone to read it to you and read it out loud. Every single one of them asks permission to turn on the camera, the microphone, read your emails, read your SMS messages, and send it to an address in Atlanta. I would like to focus on the camera. Now, do you know this? You should because you have acquiesced. You said, yes, I will submit to your requirements. Why? Because you want the Bible reading app. You want the game app. You want whatever app it is that makes your life easier to live. Now, how many of these apps are there? Hundreds of thousands of them. Does anyone here have a teenage daughter between the age of, I don't know, 10 and 15? Most of you, some of you certainly. So they have waterproof telephones. Almost every teenager does now. I can guarantee you that while we are speaking, there is a teenage girl somewhere taking a shower and texting someone. How do you know that one of her apps is not also taking pictures or videos and putting them up on a porn site in Russia? This is not science fiction. This is actually happening today. And we've, we've missed something somewhere. I, I, I talk twice a month at least to groups like yourselves trying to bring point, bring home this point. Security is no longer just protecting the data center or encrypting information so that between the phone and the data center, people in the middle can't read it. Well, there is no one in the middle anymore. You are the data center. You collectively and all of your smartphones and mobile devices hold all of the data 